In this presentation, the technique for fracture fixation using the 2.4 LCP radial head plate will be demonstrated. The objectives of the exercise are to show the clinical indications, the patient position and the surgical approach, the safe zones, and the surgical technique. The 2.4 mm LCP radial head plates are indicated for intra- and extra-articular fractures of the proximal radius and multifragmented radial neck fractures. The patient is positioned supine on the radial lucent table. The extremity is prepared from the axilla to the hand. This preparation allows rotation of the forearm as well as flexion and extension of the elbow during the fixation. The incision is drawn on the skin. For a radial head or neck fracture, the typical approach is from the lateral epicondyle across the radial head and neck and then down more distally. This approach is a bit more anterior than a standard Kocher approach, which would allow access only to the back of the radial head. The skin is incised. The extensor musculature should be visible in order to determine the location of the deep dissection. The tissue flaps are elevated. At this point, the extensor muscles should be visible. The enconius muscle is posterior, and a part of the extensor muscle, the extensor carpi ulnaris, is located posteriorly. The lateral epicondyle is palpated. It can be seen that the first incision is centered on the radial head. The deep incision should be started proximal to the lateral condyle and extended into the extensor mass. Distally, the fascia and the extensor muscles are incised. Below is the supinator muscle, which should not be incised at this moment. Here, the fibers of the supinator muscle are visible, running perpendicular to the extensor muscles. The dissection is extended proximally. The radial head is palpated. The idea is to stay anterior to the equator of the radial head. The capitellum is visualized first. This is the front of the capitellum. The dissection should not be extended too far posteriorly from the capitellum. It is important to maintain the lateral collateral ligament, which runs posteriorly. Removal of this attachment of the ligament should be avoided if possible. The anterior insertion of the extensor muscles can be removed to obtain a better view of the joint surfaces. The annular ligament is incised. The incision remains anterior to the equator of the radial head. The dissection should be extended distally to give access to the radial neck. The posterior interosseous nerve runs approximately here. It is located in the anterior capsule, which should remain undisturbed, and comes down the radial neck approximately 3.5 centimeters from the radial head. The capsule can be safely incised to the base of the radial neck. 
For added protection, the forearm is pronated, taking the posterior interosseous nerve farther away. These are the fibers of the supinator. With a two-hole plate or screws in the radial head, it's not necessary to locate the nerve. As this plate is quite short, impingement on the posterior interosseous nerve can be avoided. The extensor muscles are incised, revealing the supernator, which is incised in the posterior aspect with the forearm pronated. This incision should provide enough exposure. If it's necessary to locate the radial posterior interosseous nerve, it is located here in the leading edge of the supernator muscle. With this exposure, the head can be fixed or a small radial head plate can be inserted. The safe zone of the radial head and neck is in the non-articular region. If the plate is placed on the lateral portion, it should not impinge ulnarly on the proximal radial ulnar joint. With the forearm in a neutral position, the center of the safe zone is straight lateral, plus or minus 50 degrees. If the position of the plate is too posterior or too anterior, under rotation it will impinge on the joint in pronation or in supination. Again, the forearm is straight lateral, and the plate is placed straight lateral in the safe zone, which subtends in an arc of about 100 degrees. Both radial head rim and neck plates fit within the Hotchkiss safe zone. The Hotchkiss safe zone is defined as an area of 105 degrees on the radial head that is free of impingement between the ulna and radius. This safe zone is located on the opposite side of the radial tuberosity. This is a three-part radial head and neck fracture. The anterior fragments are reduced using the pointed reduction forceps. A thread hole is drilled across both fragments with the 1.5 mm drill bit. The 2 mm drill bit is used to create the glide hole. Since these two fragments are in the safe zone, the screw head can be left somewhat prominent. But to make sure there is no impingement during full rotation, countersinking will be done to lower the screw below the subchondral surface. The depth of the hole is measured. Care must be taken when selecting the length of the screw because the proximal radial ulnar joint is on the far side. Therefore, the far cortex should not be engaged. The depth gauge reads 26 millimeters, but a 22 millimeter screw is long enough to give cancellous purchase on the far side without penetrating the articular surface. The star drive screwdriver is used to insert the 2 millimeter cortex lag screw, which compresses the two fragments. The screw head can be seen to lie below the subchondral surface. The forceps is removed and placed across the remaining intra-articular fracture. The next step is to insert a second lag screw. This screw will provide compression between the third fragment and the first two. The 1.5 mm thread hole is drilled first. The near fragment is over-drilled with the 2 mm drill bit. This screw hole does not need to be countersunk, as it's in the neck portion, which is non-articular. The depth is measured to determine the screw length. It reads 26 millimeters. A 22 millimeter screw is sufficient. The screw is inserted. As it's tightened, it compresses the third fragment against the others. This screw is in the non-articular portion, so it should not interfere with the annular ligament or the proximal radial ulnar joint. The forceps is removed. The threaded LCP drill guide can be used to position the radial neck plate.
Its correct position is on the neck and not on the top of the head. This position minimizes impingement during rotation. The ideal position is proximal to the articular surface of the radial head and in the Hotchkiss safe zone. A 2.4 mm bicortical cortex screw is placed in the shaft of the plate through the DCU portion of a combi hole. The 1.8 mm drill bit is used to create the hole. The depth is measured. The screw is inserted, but not completely. At this stage, the plate can still be adjusted by sliding it proximally or distally. The plate can also be rotated to a certain degree so that it fits correctly on the radial head and neck. When the optimal position is achieved, the screw is tightened. The threaded drill guide is removed, and a second cortex screw is placed in the shaft to lock the plate in position. The first screw to be inserted through the head of the plate into the radial head is a 2 mm cortex screw. This screw will pull the radial head firmly to the plate. The depth is measured. As with the cortex lag screws, this screw is a monocortical screw to avoid the radial head or the far distal radial ulnar joint. A 14 mm long screw is selected. The next screw to be inserted is a 2.4 mm locking screw. The LCP threaded drill guide is screwed into the plate hole. The drill guide positions the screw at the appropriate angle. A plate hole has to be selected that avoids the screws that were inserted earlier. The hole is drilled with the 1.8 mm drill bit. The depth can be read directly from the mark on the drill bit and the scale on the drill guide. Here, 16 millimeters. The drill guide is removed. The screw should not touch the articular surface of the radial head or the proximal radial ulnar joint. Therefore, a 14 millimeter long locking screw is selected. A second locking screw is placed at the appropriate angle. Locking screws provide a fixed angle support. The result of the fixation shows that the three fragments are aligned. The plate fixes the radial head to the shaft with good overall alignment of the head to the shaft. The plate is placed in the safe zone, distal to the radial head. The first 2 mm cortex screw is recessed below the chondral surface. Often there is comminution in these fractures that does not allow a complete anatomical reduction. The angle of the radial head is aligned with the shaft. The radial head is not at 90 degrees to the shaft, but rather at an angle of 10 to 15 degrees to the shaft. After the alignment has been accepted visually, Fluoroscopy should be used to examine the elbow for stability. The rotation of the elbow should be visually inspected to make sure that the plate or screws do not impinge on the annular ligament or collateral ligament. This presentation has shown the clinical indications, the patient position and the surgical approach, the safe zones, and the surgical technique.